Happy New Year, my beautiful, beautiful friend, and welcome to video number one of 2020. I hope you all enjoyed your day. I spent time with my family. We had a great time, played some games, ate some good food, and now it's back to life, right? <laughs> so what I want to say first is thank you for everything that you have all done over the past year. I know I've said this already in a video, but I need to reiterate how grateful I am for all of you, for your friendships, for the likes, the comments, the donations, the gifts, just all of it. I am a better person today because of you just know that. So with that being said, here's to 2020. It's going to be a good year. Positive thinking, people. Positive thinking. So you saw me do this a few videos back. This was a time lapse piece I did. I didn't talk. I was just swiping on a bare canvas. And here it is. It's all dry, ready to go. Those primary elements are just absolutely gorgeous. But what happens with these, and it, it's the strangest thing, is sometimes they'll dry a little bit darker than when they were wet. But once you put resin onto these, they just come back to life in an unbelievable way. So I've gotten a lot of questions on resining a canvas and resining a canvas that has primary elements on it. So I figured I would not only do a canvas with you guys, but also a piece of wood that has primary elements on it. Now, I'm not going to varnish, but I'm going to also explain varnishing with these because there is a specific way to do them. Now, I, for one, if I varnish, which is very, very rarely, I like to take my varnish, put a little puddle of it on the canvas and tilt it around and get a nice, even coat and then, you know, do the sides and let it dry. With these, you cannot do that because these are water-soluble pigments, the primary elements, that is. Um, they are water-soluble, and if you use a varnish that has water in it and you pour it onto your canvas or let it sit in air, one area for too long, it will reactivate the colors and you will get bleeding. So what you need to do is this. You need to get a foam brush or a brush of your choice, however you varnish. And you need to take your brush, dip it in your varnish, and you need to seal these in first, okay? What I mean by seal them in first is before you go putting on three, four layers of this, you want to just give one layer to seal it in so that they won't bleed. So you're going to take your brush, you're going to dip it in your varnish, you're going to wipe it off a little bit, and you're going to one time in one direction go down one area, just like this, and don't go over that area again. You're going to re-dip your brush in the varnish, wipe it off, you don't want it dripping. You're going to go down the next area, and you're going to repeat that until you have gone over the entire canvas one time, each section one time, one time only. You're gonna let it dry. Now those pigments are sealed in, now you can go pour on as much as you want and they're not gonna bleed, okay? So that's varnishing. As for resin, you don't have to do any of that. You're just gonna pour your resin on and go. But when it comes to canvases, you need to be careful with resin. And the reason for that is, is resin is very heavy. And you want to make sure if you are not working on a better quality canvas, the canvases with the thick sides, I believe it's one and three quarters or one and a half inches. 
these are the top quality canvases okay this canvas right here cost me twelve dollars alone just for one canvas these are much more tighter than a level one canvas which you can't see it but this is one of the ones that are got the staples going down the back I want you to look at the tension on this canvas I don't know if you'll be able to see it can you see Let's see if I hold it like this I don't know if I'll be able to show it on this one here we go you see how loose that is okay if you go put uh, resin on this without supporting the back this resin is going to push down in the center okay and it's going to pull it away from the edges so what you want to do is this is a I believe a 12 by 16 you want to get a piece of cardboard you want to cut it just maybe a quarter to a half inch shorter than what the canvas is so if this is 16 you would cut i would say 15 inches and then if this is 12 you would do 11. you want it just a little bit smaller than the canvas and you're going to take that piece of cardboard and stick it up under the frame here in the back you can see there that i can put something under the frame so you want to shove that cardboard up under its rear and then you want to flip it over and make sure you do not see the imprint of the cardboard because if there's an imprint of it that means you haven't shoved it far enough up under the frame or you have shoved it too far up the frame it's got to be perfect you want that cardboard to land right in the center of this frame when you have it tucked up underneath and what that's going to do is when the resin goes to push down on the canvas it's not going to be able to because the cardboard is going to be there supporting it so that's for cheaper canvases but with these level three canvases i do not have that problem i can pour it right on there so next let's address our sides so to me this side the paint flows over from the painting over onto the sides and it looks like it should be there okay it looks like it should be there this however does not look like it should be there okay so that's no good so what do we do in this case what you want to do is you want to take whatever black or white you used for your base or if you want one of the matching colors that you used and you want to paint over those sides with a brush by hand and that's going to keep them nice and clean looking and your customer very happy believe me i never get complaints about my sides I don't have drips. If you resin and you end up with drips, I go back and I sand them down and I re-resin them. Sometimes I do five coats of resins, resin on my paintings to get it perfect, okay? So all you wanna do is go and paint down the sides and cover that all up so that it looks nice and neat, okay? I'm not going to do all of this on camera with you, but you get the point here. Just be careful. You don't want to get the top of the painting. So you're going to let that dry. And then you're going to be good to go for your resin. Now, as far as cleaning the surface, um, you don't want to use anything that has water in it. I mean, I didn't use silicone, so there's no need for me to clean this surface. I'll do this off camera. No need for me to clean the surface because I didn't use silicone. So I'm ready to go. I have a can of air. I'll just blow the surface really quick and any dust particles that are there will be gone 
or you could do it by mouth. I mean, I just did this two days ago and it's been put away, so it's pretty clean. So what I'm going to do is finish my sides, dry them really quick, and we're going to move on. While I'm at it, let me take a moment to address another question that was asked of me regarding the this month's Bright Blooms kit and the vivid enamel that comes with the 12 primary elements. What else can you do with this? Well, one thing you can do is you can mix this however much paint you want to make. You can put some of this in the cup. I don't need much. So, so that's what? A tablespoon, maybe? You're going to take just a tiny bit of your powder. Don't need much. These are little taster spoons that come with the kit. You get 25 of them. So, we're going to say the little tiny tip of that taster spoon. into that enamel. Mix it around. If you want it a little bit darker than what it is, you can add a little tiny bit more. Add a Somebody asked me, you know, how long do these last? If you don't overuse them, then they last a long time. A lot of people, myself included, are just tempted to, you know, take a scoopful. You don't need that much. They are super, super pigmented. I will show you in a minute how pigmented they are. But anyway... So now it's at its maximum deepness. This, No matter how much more of this you add, it's not going to get any darker than this. This is the color. This one is called Passion, by the way. You can now brush paint with these. You do your mixed media. You can do glazing. Um, if you have gum Arabic, you can make watercolors with them there's a lot of different things you can do you can put some polycrylic inside of an ornament and sprinkle them in lots and lots of things to do but right now what i'm going to do with this is i'm because primary elements are semi-transparent i'll show you here on the paper so you can see the paper through because they are transparent I'm gonna put them on top of this black that I just painted my edges and I'm gonna get a nice when it dries a nice um, it's not gonna stay this color it's going to be like a color shift. So the side's going to be black, but you're going to see that nice violet shimmer when the painting turns, when you move the painting. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and do all the sides and dry the sides, and then I'll give you a close-up of that. So there are, these are not just for bloom making. Um, she also sells, Leslie Onstat also sells through Color Art, a product called Polypore, which is used for pouring. So you mix the pigments in with the polypore and you do your pouring. Um, Yeah, so that's just one of a few things that you can do with them. It's not just pouring. You can brush paint with them. So 
This is almost dry already. Let me finish this up and I will give you a close up and we'll start with the resin. Okay, so if you see, I'm holding it, it looks black. But then you see that color shift? So it adds just a little color to that. Okay, so that's something else you can do with those. And here is that color dry. That one is called passion. So now to move on with the resin. Um, same rules. Go for uh, wood. You want to make sure that your sides are clean looking, that there is no major drips. Now, on my piece here, I noticed there is an area that has a drip. Um, it's not even a drip. It's an air bubble. Uh, let's see. Where is it? It's so small. Oh, it's right here. Right here. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. Something like that. You can see it right there. Something like that. My camera is not going to focus if I get that close. When you go to resin around, I mean, it's a little tiny bump. It should be all right. But if you have a big, massive drip on there, you're going to have to sand it with sandpaper. Okay, here's that swipe I did, the hot and cold swipe. And you'll also notice that, um, like right here, I don't know, see the, the little bump? That was a bubble that didn't pop. But once you put the resin over, you're not going to see that, okay? The, the resin adds a little... Uh, layer on top so you're not going to see that if it, you do for some reason like it's a really really big bump you could try to lightly sand it down but this is acrylic it's not resin to begin with so you're going to peel the paint off what I would suggest is just doing another layer if this shows through on your your layer of resin but anyway there's that clock absolutely love it well, it's not a clock yet, but you see those pretty colors. All right. So here we go. We're going to start. I have my canvas here. It's all ready to go. And we're going to use KS resin today. It is a one-to-one -one resin, meaning you use equal parts resin mixed with equal parts hardener. Um, long working time, I get always get over an hour out of this. Uh, low odor, extremely low or odor. Um, I can put my face up to it and barely smell it. Um, no VOCs has non yellowing agents in it free shipping and $70 a gallon plus I have a coupon so it's the best bang for your buck and I've tried a lot of resins I would compare it they have two they have a liquid art epoxy and then they have a liquid art ultra UV epoxy so the gallon of the one that I use is 70 and then they have the Cadillac, which is, has added, uh, UV protectants and all that extra of them. I have not had a problem with this one yellowing at all, but that one is 90 a gallon. So it, it, the free shipping alone, that saves you 20 bucks right off the bat. So it's very, it, to me, it's well worth it. So when you mix up your resin, you want to mix it for the full three minutes. You want to make sure you scrape the bottom. You want to make sure you scrape down the sides. Be 
because if you don't get all of that mixed in, you're going to have soft spots in your final piece. So go down those sides really good. And then you want to make sure you scrape this stick off at least three times during the process. Okay, even the sides of it, as skinny as they are. If you want to know how much resin you need to use for your canvas, you want to go on artresin.com. They have a calculator right at the bottom of their page. It will tell you how many ounces you need for your canvas size. So this one is a uh, 9 by 12, I think. So this is only going to be about maybe 5 ounces. I have other things to coat. That's why I mixed up so much. But this will be about 5 ounces. And this is how I do my paintings. I don't know if you see these colors coming back now. That resin just makes them light up. So, I'll put a nice big puddle on. Okay. And then I'll just start spreading it out. It's that simple. Get it right up to the edge. I don't go over the edge at first, just right up to the edge. I save the edges to last. You want to make sure you have a toothpick or something pointy to pick out any debris like hair or lint, dust particles. You want to maybe have a light, a flashlight to shine down onto the surface. That helps to see hairs. And what also helps to see hair is tilting the canvas around like this towards your light and you can see anything that's in there. So I have six cats and I can tell you I've never sold a painting with a hair in it. So get it right up to the edge there. And then once you have the top covered, what I like to do is I like to tilt it over the edge. So we'll go this way first. Get some going over that edge so that I can then take my glove and rub down the side. So think about this as if you were putting down your base paint to pour on top of your white or your black. Think of resin like that. You want it to go over those edges and get those sides. If you have to add a little bit more, you can. And as I said, if you coat your painting and the next day you come back and you can see the edges of the canvas still poking through, you're going to have to do another layer. And that happens because the weight of the resin, it pulls it away from the edges. So that cardboard trick really does help. Okay. Now a heat gun will bust the air bubbles, but not all. And the torch gets them right away. Whereas the heat gun, you have to keep it on the resin for so long to pop those bubbles that you take a risk of burning your resin. So a torch is definitely the way to go for this. And you don't have to be afraid of them. They have little tiny ones. They sell them to light cigarettes now, little tiny ones. So, and I could show you one of those. I have one right here. That's supposed to be a cigarette lighter. You can use that. You can even use one of those grill lighters with the long handles or the, the candle lighters. Um, it's going to take you a bit but it will work. So I have my sides coated. I have my top fully coated. Now what I like to do is I like to come back in with some resin and have it go right over the side, just like this to give a nice thick, 
thick coat that can start draining down the side and covering it or help to cover it. Because once you cover the sides with your glove. Now you have resin on there and this resin that I'm putting on now will glide down over smoothly. Okay. You have to make sure the back of your canvas is taped off or you're going to have a mess to clean. You're going to have to sand it to get the drips off the back. Some people will sell their paintings with the drips on the back and it I just I can't I want it to be nice and clean and don't get me wrong there's cases where you know there's the sides are just impossible and you have to just kind of move on but you could always try. Try, try, try your best. Okay. So now I'm just going to take my hand and run it underneath the canvas along the frame. Just like so. And then I'm going to take my gloves off and we're going to torch. So here's my little lighter. I collect torches, so I have all, torches of all different sizes. Another smart thing to do is double glove. That helps a lot. So when you take your first set of sticky resin gloves off, you have another clean pair on already. So now I'm going to hit my sides because sides matter too. Okay. And then what I'm going to do next, or what I do next, is... I kind of bend down to the side and glance over the top of the canvas to see what kind of goodies await me. Because there's always going to be something. Okay. And I see it. There we go. I missed a little spot there. You'll see if you miss a spot. Okay, so that's it. The 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 uh, coat is flawless right now. So what I'll do is I'll move it to the side, put it underneath its cover. The way I cover it is I put some cups around it and I put a piece of clean cardboard over the top, not touching the canvas, obviously. And uh, I just let it sit there. So I let this sit about 10 minutes, came back and popped the bubbles again. And she's clean as a whistle, so over here she goes. And when we're done, I'll show you the simple thing I do to cover my paintings, and it works great for me. So now we're going to move on to the piece of wood. Now, this is going to be a clock, but, 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 because there's always a but, I am going to 
fill in the hole with resin only because my husband's going to drill it out for me. If you don't have a husband to drill it out or you don't know how to drill it out yourself, I would suggest plugging up this hole with a straw so that the resin can't get down in there for the clock hands to go in. So now I'm going to just take my resin. Same thing. It's the same process with wood. Okay. Just like so. I'm going to tilt her around this time though, instead of using the Um, losing my words here. Instead of using the tongue depressor, I'm just going to tilt it. Get it good and covered. And then go over my sides. And I have the whole back of this taped off. There we go. Coming around the mountain, slowly but surely. You can also use your hand to help guide. Okay. One other thing, if you are resining multiple pieces like I am, do not leave a large amount of resin in one place because it will speed up the processing time and you will come back to a cup that is flaming hot and the resin will be rock hard in there. So. If you're not going to move quickly after you mix up a large batch, separate it into smaller cups. What I tend to do is I will coat everything first so that I get that resin out of the cup and then I'll come back and pop bubbles and do all that. Okay. So that's that one. Now I have one thing left to do. I have a little bit of resin, I think that it should be enough to do the first coat because this thing that I'm going to show you next needs multiple coats. So I'm just gonna move this over here for a second. And bring in the next item. We're not gonna pop the bubbles yet on that because I want to get this done first. So I'll come back to that. So here is a snowflake that I made that I need to coat. Okay, it's not gonna stay on those cups permanently. I'm just using them this minute. So we're gonna go this way. This will definitely take two coats, this snowflake, just because of the sides. It's very intricate, but I wanted to at least get it started while I had the resin to do it. A shape like this, it's very hard to get it right on the first time, especially with those sides. So, there's that. And something like this, I definitely recommend using your hand to coat it because There are a lot of parts to this baby. By the way, everything you see in this video is for sale. If you're interested in the first painting, the clock is not done yet, but when that's done, I will show you guys what it looks like. Um, and the snowflake. You can email me artbytammyyahoo.com 
I'm going to also put them in my Etsy shop if they don't sell right away. I have a ton of paintings I have to put in there. So there you go. That is coated. And as for the sides, I'm going to just kind of run my finger in there for now. I'm not going to make you watch all that. But that's that. So let me show you really quick how I just dry my, my pieces. Okay, so there's my top grade high class drying system. <laughs> Listen, as long as you keep the dust and stuff from going floating down onto it, you're good. Once I cover that up, once I know it's 100% clean, nothing in the surface, that's when I get out of this room. I don't walk in here. I don't do anything until that is cured. Here's my pretty snowflake. So anyway, I hope this video was informative and it helped to answer some questions out there about resining acrylic paintings. And um, I just want to say thank you again. Happy New Year to you all. And I hope to see you in this upcoming year. I mean, it's here. So I'm just totally grateful for everything I have, including you. And with that being said, my friends, happy pouring.